wife likes it. What's your wife's name? Okay, hold on a second. Oh, okay. Wait, here we go. We're going to start up the music for right now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to jump the gun, do we? <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the Fox Valley Voice. I am Jaime Gutierrez. Our mission is to entertain, to inform, and to assist while exploring the people, places, and events that make the Fox Valley such a wonderful place to live, work, and visit. And here in the studio with me today to help me with our mission, Kane County Board Chairman, Mr. Chris Lawson. Chairman, thank you so much for coming in. Hi, mate. It's good to be with you. Thank you very much for your invitation. Well, um, yeah, it, it's it's a little bit of um, Wayne's World down here in the basement, but uh, <laughs> you know what? That's funny. No, it's not. It's very nice space. It's uh, uh, that's funny. So, uh, do you know that uh, when I go to other parts of the country, that is how folks uh, maybe not so much now, but uh, where they did in the past, that's how they relate to Aurora. Yeah, Wayne's World. Say, Oh my gosh, all the good people and all the good things here, and that's what you know about us? So, but you know what? You're busting through that with your with your program. Well, thank you. So. I appreciate that. Um, it is uh, it is a pleasure to have you here, and uh, I, I would like to jump right in because we, we, we have a limited amount of time with you this morning. You're a very busy guy. Mm -hmm. um, but as I just mentioned, uh, we are coming up, it's almost to the day, uh, of this time last year, first Tuesday in November, that you were elected as chairman of the Kane County Board. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to open it up to you and ask you um, your thoughts on your first year. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for bringing that up. I mean, it didn't occur to me. I, uh, uh, it seems like it was just yesterday, uh, but a year ago, uh, it has been a very humbling experience. Uh, there is so much good in this uh, in the county. Uh, even in the county government, uh, uh, where there's 1,250 people, we serve 515,000 folks. Uh, the quality of um, the folks, the folks who are uh, dedicated to uh, helping, uh, what I've learned is just enormous. Um, but people are really dedicated to doing a good job. Uh, after 20 years in the state senate. Um, you know, Springfield, some really intelligent, you know, and, and dealing with some really important stuff. But what we do at the county level really affects people's everyday life. So the three things that I had promised was, number one, uh, freeze the property tax levy. We are being taxed out of our homes. Uh, the state of Illinois has the highest out-migration of any state in the union where uh, people are leaving the state. And I think one of the biggest complaints is the uh, property taxes. So mm -hmm. uh, we've frozen the levy. We're already working on the, th the budget for the third year in a row. And some people say, well, you know, the county, Forest Preserve, Fox Valley Park District, those three areas that I have a, an impact on, um, that those are only a nickel to a dime of your property tax. And I say, it's a nickel or a dime. And so I, uh, not only do we have to take care of our part of your tax bill uh, and your listeners' tax bills, uh, but also try to create an example where, uh, that, that's, that shows we can live within our means. Now, kind of dis a little bit discouraging. I mean, I'm very encouraged with what we're doing. However, over the weekend, I noticed that um, uh, one of the school districts in King County just increased its levy uh, by a vote by 9.7%. Mm. So the biggest portion of people's uh, property taxes is going to go up by a dime on the dollar, and it's just it's counterproductive. I had also read an article where a couple of the board members were upset that they didn't have a chance to talk about it, uh, to talk about some ideas that would have kept it down. Uh, and then uh, another one of the park districts uh, in the western, southwestern portion of Kane County raised their, theirs by 2.6%. So you say, well, Chris, uh, as you lower the water level in, you know, your boat, uh, it's kind of like the total, you know, uh, people are raising it. But I figure, you know, our responsibility, our responsibility is not that area, uh, but across the, uh, you know, across the county, we, we uh, can do it. Very interesting that 
uh, there were three citizens who were really upset, uh, and I had gone to a uh, Mark Armstrong is the supervisor of assessments. This guy is so good at his work uh, that he actually writes the legislation in Illinois about property taxes. And he, 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 he's an appointed person. He's not a political guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but he goes out to, like, he'll give maybe 12 to 15 seminars around the uh, county to help people lower their property taxes. And I went to one of them. Actually, it was... It was actually on my 35th anniversary uh, huh. that I went over uh, with my wife, Sarah. Uh, what a romantic guy. Yes, I, I am. I'm all heart. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, I mean, they were really upset about the, um, you know, the property taxes. And uh, the Fox Valley Park District was having a levy, uh, like, increase final hearing. And I called back into the people who I met. They sent three people over. They spoke, and and I spoke in support of their position. And the Forest Preserve reconsidered, and they did not put the property tax levy. So when people say, "There's nothing I can do about right. government," I'm, I'm too small. And what can I do? That's right. Yeah, they can. It's it's it is possible. Yeah. So that's the uh, the three promises uh, from a year ago that got started a year ago were freeze the property tax levy, mm -hmm. treat people with respect and then uh, uh, introduce management best practices. Um, it's, it's funny, uh, a little bit harder, a uh, little bit more challenging on, you know, always respectful because, you know, you come up against some problems. Uh, uh, you have a couple of people who, rather than trying to move us forward, uh, they want to replay uh, some of the politics of, you know, what you went through in a primary or a general election. And that is not what people want. Um, you know, at least give people three and a half years of work before you start to play the politics, you know? Right, right. So, yeah, it seems like, um, I don't know so much at the county level, but at the at the, um, oh, yeah. the bigger level, it's just a constant cycle of, of campaigning, right? right? That's exactly and, right. And uh, I'm not a very political person, but uh, I, I, I'm often wondering to myself, when is this guy in his office yeah. actually doing some work, Right. you know? And no, no, not talking about you, well, of course. No, it's uh, and and what it is is it becomes posturing, and people get frozen like they're statues in their posturing, and then when people say, "But, but Jaime, uh, and it would it, I mean, you'd get something done," but they say, "Well, Chris, <laughs> Chris, we want you to get something done," uh, freezing up the federal government. They don't want that. Uh, the uh, pension problem that is bankrupting along with Medicaid eligibility, uh, bankrupting the state of Illinois, uh, those things are solvable problems. You can't spend more than you have. Uh, it's a mathematical thing to figure out uh, about the pensions uh, that you can't promise more than you can pay. Mm -hmm. and, and then it ends up that everybody's hurt. Right. So. Yeah, uh, the, the the partisan nature of of, of politics yeah. nowadays is is a little bit disheartening. Yes, but again, reassuring at the local level, at the county level, um, we don't have it. Uh, some of my what I consider closest allies and people who are moving the ball down the field toward touchdown uh, are from the other party, and um, some of the folks who I've had the most challenge with. Um, actually are are in my own party so hmm. but that's the constant you know just keep hammering away at it yeah and do you feel that that has a bearing with what you said earlier about the fact that at the county level you're so much closer to yes. the people that you're serving you know perhaps if if some of the congressmen and the senators Absolutely. had daily contact with Absolutely. their constituents maybe it would be a different story that's exactly what the that's exactly the the story because you know, the local folks uh, are always there. They're at church. They're at the bingo uh, games. Uh, uh, they're at the grocery store. And, and actually, if you, if you come and visit, you know, the, the, uh, either the judicial center or the uh, government center, um, take a look in people's eyes, and you see a different kind of enthusiasm of people who understand that they're spending their career serving other people. Mm -hmm. And and it's because they're there all the time. There are some very hard workers in Congress, in the U.S. Senate, and in the General Assembly in Illinois. But the time is away, and what pulls them 
um, you know, whether it's the the larger traditional legacy media, um, it's it's just not the personal touch. This is the personal touch. Mm -hmm. And there's a great satisfaction. Uh, you talk to anybody who's a village president or a trustee on a board, um, uh, and it's like they know that they're having an impact and they know who they're accountable to. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it's it's a lot different than even being in Springfield? Oh, uh, much, much different. And I got to say, from my vantage point, after 20 years of been a lot of frustration, a lot of progress, a lot of good work, um, but a lot of frustration. This is 10 times better. Excellent. I, I'm enjoying this. And some of the people who we have uh, serving the half a million people at Kane County, whether it's our transportation department with uh, Carl Shadle, uh, he's the number one engineer in the state of Illinois of all the 102 county engineers. Wonderful guy. Uh, he has an engineer's sense of humor, but he is so good at his work and, and so careful with how we spend you know, your money. Uh, and he has this, his sidekick there, like almost inseparable, uh, Tom Rickert, um, where uh, the impact that we can make from Kane County on the entire region of Northern Illinois uh, with like the uh, regional transportation authority, uh, Metra, uh, Pace, uh, and then the uh, Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning. Uh, these guys working together uh, get more th more work than two people. You know, there's a synergy in their close relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, in our public health, we have this lady named Barb Jeffers, who is just fantastic. Um, I uh, early on I was thinking. Ooh, she has quite a payroll. Uh, there are some folks who, uh, I mean, those are, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a small business bean counter. So, um, you know, earnings levels and uh, what a small businessman takes, uh, you know, I, I, the levels of salary, uh, there are some uh, highly compensated professionals in that area. So I wanted to go over and see, well, what are these folks like? And sat down and to watch how Barb treats her staff with respect and then how they reciprocate uh, and care about what's going on, uh, whether it's uh, uh, containing any kind of threat for tuberculosis, um, uh, uh, solving the problem that we had with animal control, mm -hmm. uh, that there were three directors there before I got there uh, who unfortunately uh, things didn't work out and they, 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 um, there was failure there. Uh, she came on board. Uh, she and I worked together, uh, made an appointment to that spot, and now we're back on top of things there. But anyway, really great people. Okay. So people should come and visit. They should come and visit uh, a county board meeting uh, or, you know, just, you know, I'd invite anybody who's interested to give me a call. Can I give out a telephone number? Absolutely. Okay. 630-232-5931. My assistant's name is Dawn, and I return all my telephone calls. So if anybody ever has any curiosity about stuff, um, just holler. Okay. Now, that's not your cell phone number. We're not going to be waking you up in the middle of the night if we call that number. No, right? actually, okay. it's not. Okay, good. <laughs> Although I, I, I answer that uh, frequently, and my home telephone number is in the book. Uh -oh. and it has been for 21 years. Okay. Don't they'll get my best attention, though, if they'll, <laughs> you know, kind of go through the system. But I'm, I return all the home calls, too. And, and, you know, when people are really upset about something and they need help, that's why I'm here. Yeah. And that's what I enjoy the most. And it sounds like you're enjoying the more hands-on approach. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I got a chance to, I had the privilege of working for my father, who had started an accounting practice, grew it to where there were 150 offices around mostly the Midwest, and then had a massive heart attack. Uh, I had uh, graduated from Harvard Business School, had a CPA. Uh, my father had passed along the good training. Uh, and I was working as assistant to president at Gould Corporation. It was 43 divisions. At that time, $2 billion, uh, so it was like, also 35 years ago, and um, my dad wasn't getting better after uh, about a year. Uh, he invited me to come home, help. We grew, during that time, we grew from 150 to 450 offices, uh, like McDonald's of small business accounting. We had 22,000 clients, and my dad got his health back. Hmm. And during that time, I, I think I learned through doing um, so much about management. 
And um, actually, kind of the story uh, goes that I asked my dad if someday uh, I'd be like a part owner in the business. You know, if the son would be, you know, all this will be yeah. here someday. Well, I asked the question, and my dad's answer to it was he got really upset. He goes, he goes, you know, Chris, why are you trying to shove me out the door? You know, you're not, you know, nobody's uh, going to put me out to pasture. He's a very strong guy. He yeah, was, uh, but that wasn't your intent. No, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't. But I'm sure that I, I must have hit him wrong on that day. Um, so, you know, I kind of hike up my, my belt and pants and I go back to my desk <laughs> and work for another year uh, and come back, ask the same question, got the same answer, uh, same reaction. And in our family, you don't have to, like, argue about stuff like that. You just have to buy a franchise. And so my wife and I bought a franchise at the highest price we ever offered the contract, at the highest royalty. But oh, you, I got a chance. He didn't even break you a deal? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> you, man. You have to know our family. He's a tough guy. Um, so, But wonderful, wonderful person to work with and taught me so much. And then uh, Sarah and I had a great experience uh, actually doing what we had been teaching accountants, 300 accountants, uh, what to do. So I do like the hands-on. I like the management side of, of um, you know, serving people. Uh, so here it's the management because you have 1,250 employees uh, and a little bit of the politics. Actually, a little bit more of the politics than I expected. And um, when you make a management decision, uh, you know, in the private uh, sector, uh, you don't have the newspapers like cranking away on the other guy's point of view mm -hmm. and um there's like there's no like check and balance on that right right so. that that was going to be one of my questions that was your third um promise oh. about bringing the best practices to to the county government yes. and um, my question which you've already started to address is um you know the differences between being in in a, a private business yes. and public service holy smokes this is this is like uh you have a whole audience it's like uh three ring circus and your audience is around you and you have a couple of folks who uh, can hurt you pretty bad you know by by saying things that are totally out and you know depending on how the press wants to treat you um it's like wait a second um uh anyway yeah so e even if you have a majority vote of like there are 24 uh, uh, board members even if you have a vote of 22 to 2 uh, and what happens is that all the attention is given to the two who objected rather than 11 times that many who said yeah this is good this is how we should go yeah uh, it's a lot different <laughs> I can imagine so but it's challenging and it's it's fun and make the most of it yeah. I, I hope that I don't have to spend so much time in that area that um, we don't make progress on things uh, for instance one of the first things we did within I think it was about 90 days of you know this day a year ago uh, was we refinanced uh, one of our bonds uh, that was about 27 to 30 million dollars and saved 2.8 million dollars uh, over the next like nine or ten years mm -hmm. and it's it just applying things that make sense getting passage and moving on um, I went back to a, a reunion. We, we were uh, talking about that earlier. Uh, I went back to a reunion from business school. There's a fellow who's recognized as one of the leading experts in the world on competitiveness, a guy named Michael Porter at the Harvard Business School. Um, he consults large governments, uh, you know, France, Germany, the United States. He and Professor Jan Rifkin have started what they call the U.S. Jobs Initiative. I think there are two things that are most important to the people who listen to the show. Number one, don't tax me out of my home and my state. And number two, I've got to have a job so I can take care of my family. Um, this guy has uh, put together this U.S. jobs initiative, uh, has all the resources of the Harvard Business School, a national stage. And after I listened to his presentation to the alumni who had come back, uh, I went down to the microphone to ask him a question. We ran out of time. There's mm -hmm. a long line. It was just brilliant kind of lecturer. He's a very nice fella. Um, and so I went over to him afterwards, and I said, you know, could we volunteer in King County to be like an experimental laboratory for what you're working on? Not so much your theories, because he actually applies them. 
can we do that in King County? He was very excited. He said, absolutely, Chris. Then he turned me over to the assistant, and I think she was trying to balance all these balls in the air. Uh, she wasn't quite as enthusiastic, but it's like, <laughs> If we have unity on that board, and if we are all treating people like, you know, like Sunday best, you know, the tie's straight and you got a smile on and, you know, combed, you know, the hair is combed, well, you can bring people who are going to give us gifts that I couldn't afford. Uh, we, all of us, couldn't afford to pay for what they would bring for free. Right. So there is a benefit, to a big, huge benefit to our working together. Mm hmm. I think that's going to be uh, the chairman short program at next Wednesday's or next Tuesday's board meeting is uh, thanks to your show. Uh, I think that the subject that we're going to talk about is um, uh, the cooperation. What's in it for all of us if we cooperate? Sure. Um, one of my guests last week, his name is Brian Basilico, and he's a, a marketing maven. Yeah. And... Um, uh, one of his one of his theories is that um, you should never never go into a situation purely purely thinking about what you can get out of it. Yes, you're better off um, trying to find out how to serve others. Perfect, and then it comes back to you. Perfect. So that sounds like I that's see what you're why going he's, for. I see why he's the uh, the expert. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, excellent. Um, let's see. So um, we went through your three your three promises. Yes, and now. Um, I would like to ask you, uh, as far as Kane County goes, um, there there is a lot of great stuff happening mm -hmm. in Kane County, and 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 I like to cover a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I like to promote it, um, you know, businesses and arts and entertainment and things Thank like that. Thank you so much for doing that. That's my pleasure. You do such a good job. Thank too. you. Um, so I would like to ask you personally, when when you talk to people from other parts of the state or even around the country. Um, what are some of the highlights that you like to that you like to throw out there as far as about King County? About King County, uh, I think that we are a cross section of America. We have all the best right here. Uh, you think about the broad shoulders of along the Fox Valley, Fox River Valley, of Aurora and Elgin. Aurora, the second largest uh, city in the state, and then Elgin is a, a big one too. Uh, then in between you have the gems of the Tri-Cities of Batavia, Geneva, St. Charles. Um, you have what used to be industrial, now is becoming, you know, uh, um, I think that the industry, part of what the attraction was, was the uh, uh, water power. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the dam structure and all that uh, fueled some of the manufacturing. Uh, now... Uh, the Fox River is becoming one of our greatest assets as far as just the natural beauty that attracts people to where they want to live. Uh, then you go out west and you have some of the hardest working, most productive uh, farm families in the country. Uh, great soil. And there's been a, a really a big effort to protect uh, those kinds of different categories uh, where, you know, the river towns, um, a little bit further to the west uh, where there was that band of development but then also protecting our agricultural heritage uh, there was there has been and there will continue to be at least as long as I'm uh, here um, uh, holding those things precious and then protecting them mm -hmm. uh, the nature of what we do so I think that we have we offer everything uh, that America, you know, there's opportunity, uh, there's uh, wonderful people, hardworking, decent people who understand value. Uh, we have uh, the diversity uh, that people um, uh, talk about around the country, um, and it's all it's it it all melds here. Mm -hmm. So we got it all. We got it all. Yeah, right. <laughs> now we just have to live within our means without asking people for more taxes. Um, one of the things that strikes me about uh, about this area is is the stark contrast that you can find um, between um, you know you, you could be in a downtown area yes. and then drive five minutes yes. and be in the middle of you know agricultural you know you've got corn farmers and you've got horse you know yes. horse ranches and things like that right. and it, they're like right next to each other exactly. So uh, I used to have a roommate uh, in in uh, business school who came from California, 
And that was always his big stick, you know, uh, that, uh, and I think he was Northern California, but he goes, you know, uh, you can surf in the morning and by the afternoon you can be skiing up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And, mm-hmm. and we have a, a microcosm of, of uh, yeah, maybe I mean, not surfing, yeah. and maybe not skiing, skiing in a mountain, yeah. but we have a microcosm. Yeah, absolutely. What about you personally? What are some of your go-to, um, you know, if you want to go out on a date, um, or, you know, for your anniversary, if you're not going to attend some kind of a financial <laughs> <Dance> seminar. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, where do you like to go as far as uh, having a night out on the town? Um, anything, uh, anything that actually, actually is funny because I spend so much uh, time uh, and energy out on the town listening uh, to people and attending like uh, turkey dinners here in uh, North Aurora over at uh, Union Congregational or uh, out in Elburn, there's going to be a, uh, I think it's the Lions Club is putting on. Because I spend so much time, I kind of, I, I become a homebody uh, if I have time and then anything with our, our family. Hmm. So we have four sons. Uh, actually, they're all away doing what they need to do. Uh, one uh, Marine Corps uh, officer uh, pilot, uh, a naval officer out in San Diego, hmm. uh, then uh, one who's uh, in private equity out in New York City, just moved out from Chicago, uh, and then, uh, you know, going with the dream, and then one at, uh, in school in New England. And so they're all pursuing this stuff, and uh, we're a very close family, and uh, I miss them a lot. But that's what I'd like to do. That's number one on if you were to save. You know, if you had an evening, what would you do? Mm-hmm. That'd be it. Other than that, um, I married the girl who um, grew up across the street from me. Is that right? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, smartest kid in third grade at Holy Angels. Um, I lived across the street from her uh, on Wildwood Drive, west of town. My best friend, and I, I won't use his name because he's still in the area, but <laughs> he beat up her little brother. She walks down the street, rings the guy's doorbell, and he had the great misfortune of answering the door. She just wailed away on this guy. So <laughs> we learned early, just do what Sarah says, actually. Um, uh, she's really a nice, she's the smartest kid in our class. Uh, so, and, and, and the toughest. Right away, right then, you you, you staked your claim, huh? You said, yeah. listen. Well, actually, funny. I that, need her in my corner because. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be on any opposite corner. Um, uh, in in her family, there were six kids, and unfortunately, in about seventh grade, her dad passed away, and um, her mom, a couple years later, remarried a guy who had five kids, and they moved uh, closer into Chicago, then out to Los Angeles, and so I hadn't seen her for, uh, gosh, it had to be 10, 15 years. I was on a business assignment out in Los Angeles. Her cousin, who who actually, uh, her cousin, whose, whose father... Uh, was a King County Board Chairman a long time ago, uh, a guy named Bob Stum. Uh, but his son says, well, why don't you look up my cousin? She lives at the beach, and she's not bad looking. And and I go, oh, my gosh, Hans. Uh, you know, I remembered Sarah. <laughs> and, and so I called her up, and I thought I was just going to fulfill the obligation, ask her to, to a cup of coffee or a sandwich or something like that. We laughed for an hour. And then uh, went to pick her up on the date, and she had grown into this just lovely woman. And that's when uh, I okay. said, stake the claim. Okay. So That's a great story. So it's about, uh, gosh, I think what, oh, gosh, I should know this. I, I think it's like 32 years. You better know this. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is live. I can't go back and edit this. <laughs> Forgive me, Sarah. <laughs> All right, no more tax. Uh, right, right. Ta- seminars. Tax seminars on the on the anniversary. Right. Um, okay. So uh, so I can't get you to tell me where you hang out at because well, I you hang out I at hang home. Out at home. Mm-hmm. Right. When 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 you are out, even if you're not at a um, at an uh, official event as the chairman of the Kane County Board. Uh, you know, say you're at the grocery store yeah. or, or at the movies or whatever. Yeah. Um, do people stop you on the yes, street still? all the time. What, what do they say? What do they say? Um, uh, uh, a couple of things. Uh, well, three things. Uh, actually, as, as I just uh, think about it, first of all, it's almost always about the taxes. And so uh, no question about it. Second thing is about jobs. 
uh, it is it's amazing that uh, stop over at Prisco's, you know, on Prairie in Aurora, and uh, I mean, within five minutes, uh, three minutes, five minutes, a person can get into telling you about how things are, and they 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 break out in tears about uh, having lost a job or uh, an illness in the family. The third thing uh, is. Um, I, I must be getting older, but a lot of my friends and a lot of the families are experiencing, um, you know, health problems. Mm. And what these families face, it's kind of like, you know, we ought to be a lot more gentle with each other because you just never know what that person's going through. I mean, it happened at a board meeting the other day where uh, I was trying to get, I was trying to make permanent one of uh, my appointments to, and uh, it was a recommendation from uh, one of the uh, directors, and then I made the appointment, and I was trying to make it more permanent. Mm -hmm. This is for uh, animal control? Yeah, it was, and and uh, I won't go into any of the t uh, detail, uh, but what his family had gone through just the previous weekend, uh, and here on Tuesday, you know, after doing a spectacular job, private industry, public service, a spectacular job. He has uh, produced $200,000 more in uh, more revenue or saved expenses, which then allows us to continue to help, you know, puppies and kitty cats and, you know, all the animals. I mean, you got to run it first like a business so that it doesn't become a burden on the tax. Well, we're just trying to make it permanent. Uh, folks put it on ice for 30 days. Uh, it demoralized. Um, I mean, it was um, it was not a good thing for the person's morale. Um, the director who had uh, recommended and my human resources director who had supported the recommendations after going through uh, interviews. It's like um, uh, you, you don't know the damage that you've done today by you know doing something that was just silly what more does this person have to do and then when you load that on to what occurred um uh that weekend you just say that's there's lots of people who we're going to see today are struggling with just having found out that you know their husband or their wife has cancer or they've and people keep all that to themselves right and, and it's difficult to know what is going on? Right. I mean, it, and so be gentle. My my wife and I have this conversation fairly regularly about you know every once in a while we'll stop and we'll realize how complex our lives are. That's right. Right. That's right. With all the you know family and 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 friends and and things that are happening in in your neighborhood and and then if you stop to think about it and say, you know, even if you're driving down the street, every person in every car, it has the same story That's you know right. everybody is going through something crazy and so uh you're right it's it's just um a good rule of thumb to have compassion in your everyday dealings yeah so because you just don't know what they're going through yeah that should be a uh, that should be a, a takeaway for us right uh, today. I'm, I'm gonna redouble my effort today <laughs> so. good I'm not going to yell at anybody. <laughs> I can't imagine that you're a yeller. I I'm, I'm not either. I uh, don't. I don't. Right, right. Um, okay. What else do I well, have? Well, you my... also, if, yeah. uh, and I know that I don't, but as a co-host today, I yes. get to, you know. You do. Uh, ask you uh, a question or two. Okay. But I think that one of the most wonderful things about your life is that your kids are at that impressionable age of uh, nine and four if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken that's, that's correct um, what do you concentrate you know on as you're raising them um, being helpful huh um, I one, one of the things that I try to tell them on a on a fairly regular basis is that um, part of our job as just walking around you know human beings is to try to make uh, things as easy for other people as possible so um that's a nice that's a nice lesson well you know and and hopefully number one they're going to try to make it easy on us i got that you know it's funny as a parent i got that that's, um, it, actually it's very strategic but but also you know like when you know they're small kids and if we go out to eat somewhere they want to crunch crackers all over the floor and they want to go and touch the windows and you know all that stuff and and I try to, what I try to do is I try to tell them, instead of just yelling at them, hey, stop, you know, just say, listen, if we do that, now someone else has to come along and they've got to clean up our mess, yeah. you know, so why don't we just take care of it ourselves, 
you know, either clean it up ourselves or, or maybe not do it in the first place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it seems, it seems to stick a little bit. Yeah, it does. Um, it's, it's, a, it's like a, a wholesome, but it's like very practical. A kid can understand that. Well, yeah. Thanks for the lesson. Well, you're welcome. It's good. <laughs> um, maybe shall we talk about Kane County Connected for a minute here? Yes, thank you. Yeah. I think that it's really important. Um, uh, there have been some people who who um, uh, would say, uh, you know, it's you know the county business is just about transportation. You'll make sure that the um, roads are plowed and the construction isn't too hard on people, uh, and public health that you know uh, all that's going and collecting the taxes over in the treasurer's office and that kind of thing. Uh, but I think it's also got a lot to do with what's the atmosphere. Uh, what does it feel like to live here? And so what we've done is we've put together uh, what's called King County Connected uh, that builds community networks using social media. So kind of, we're kind of like with it. Yeah. I mean, people who know me well know that that's not my strong suit. Yeah. So we have other people who are much better at it. Uh, we connect people through common interests and activities that highlight the county as a premier place to live, work, and invest. Um, but it's it's not about county propaganda. You know, when, when folks have a website or that kind of thing, it's about propaganda about that government. That's not what this is. We've, we've chosen 10 initial constituencies or things that people just naturally like to do, uh, like athletes, you know, like soccer, mm -hmm. uh, employers, gardeners, um, green advocates, so people who uh, want to be involved in protecting the environment, moms and dads. You know, you just gave a, a part of what that show would be of, well, how do we become better parents? You know, more loving to each other and then uh, more patient and instructive and helpful uh, to our kids. Uh, pet owners. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that some people <laughs> like their pets more than they like their kids. Yes. <laughs> these days. People go nuts <laughs> they for their do pets. Go nuts. <laughs> uh, we have, we have a, a Santa Claus is coming uh, to... The animal control shelter, uh, I think it's December 6th or 8th, some Saturday that's coming up around that time. So people can uh, go to, uh, let's see, it is canecountyconnected.com is the website. And um, uh, they can, uh, there's a Facebook, there's a website and then Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a taxpayer group, youth group, veterans group. Uh, but on the pet owners, Santa Claus is going to come. You can come and bring your pet have uh, your picture taken with Santa Claus. Okay. It's like wild stuff. And it's just, why not have some fun while we're going through life? I mean, we work hard, we pay our bills. Uh, why not have some fun while we're doing it? And all of these uh, 10 areas. There's one, would you mind if I went into just one category? Please do. Okay. Um, in Aurora, uh, there's a lady named Mary Clark Orman who ha became very involved in the Historical Society. And I, she inspired one of our uh, efforts here, where in Aurora we got a lot of diversity. You know, in my uh, family, it was you know all four grandparents came from Romania. Uh, there's the Lithuanians and you know uh, the Hispanics now, and and just the different cultures. And uh, she brought together a program where it was stirred, not shaken. Mm -hmm. The idea, of the melting pot that uh, uh, you know America is. Uh, and to celebrate the heritage uh, of where we came from. And I talk with her, I go, hey, Mary, what do we do with that advantage? Uh, we have this diversity, but how do we make things better? I mean, we celebrate it, we're proud of it, we try to live to a better, higher standard. But And then the, the answer is, um, I mean, that's the root of the tree, but then the tree and the limbs, it's to reach out to those countries um, and make the connection, not only our local connections to each other, but for instance, uh, I was able to go to Romania, um, and I never thought I would go, uh, but I was invited uh, by uh, one of the people who had come here. Uh, eventually, they gave me a chance to speak at an energy conference in Bucharest, and I said, wow. my gosh, if you're going to let me talk, I'm coming. <laughs> so uh, uh, That's how we got you here today. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that, aren't I? Well, but it's like, 
you go over to a place like the Irish or the German where, you know, you go to the town where your family came from. I mean, if that if you have those, um, you know, those those kinds of recognizing where the roots are and it's not you're not a tourist. This is like really important. And then uh, the connections that we can make, whether it's commercial or just personal or or just travel, people who have the resources and time and want to do it, we call that one group global ambassadors. Hmm. And so um, what we're doing, we, we've already met with a consul general in uh, Chicago for Taiwan, the country of uh, uh, Taiwan. And uh, there was a person at IMSA, Illinois Math and Science Academy, uh, who is a real good mathematician, uh, uh, teaches math there. Uh, and she was going to be our contact, but she took a job someplace else, and so she's uh, not uh, here. But we're looking for that person who would like to head up, you know, whether it's the Irish or German or, you know, Romanians, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And then and then reach out and actually make an active connection with that with Correct. that area. Right. That is fascinating. It's and they say why not? You know, some people say, well, Chris, you ought to hire a an economic development director. Well, maybe someday. But what I'd like to do is start at the grassroots first. Use our natural connections around the world, and it doesn't cost us a thing, and we get people's energy. Right, right, and and it's it's more of a, like you said a grassroots thing. People tend to be a little more passionate about mm -hmm. it when you approach it in that way. Right. And we all have more fun. Yeah. So the lady who's heading that up is a lady named Cheryl Morafio. And uh, she has a great heart for building uh, relationships with people. Okay. And that's Kane County Connected. Once again, if I could borrow this. Yes. The website is KaneCountyConnected.com. You can also find them on Facebook, which is where I found them. And uh, I, I would like to offer my assistance if at all possible if there's anything that maybe we, you know if thanks uh, in order to help get out the word f to s your c these different constituents here yes. these groups you know I think you just did perhaps you know if if you want to bring in uh, you know a gardener and we need to do a show oh. with a local gardener oh, gardening group, you know, maybe we could do something like that my gosh <laughs> we now have we now have a radio station. You've, you have a media outlet now. Yes. We have a high news radio station, <laughs> Voice of the Fox Valley. Uh, okay. Excellent. Th things Thank are you happening. So much. Things are happening. We have, we have maybe just two minutes here, oh, okay. um, and, and I want to thank you again for coming down today. But um, uh, we, we talked at the top of the show about your first year in uh, with the King County Board, and now uh, what are some of the things that – we can look forward to here in the next year? Um, the most important thing is going to be the relationships with the board members. So I would first ask people to contact their board member. Uh, uh, and for, for the many people who don't know who serves them at the Kane County Board, I would ask them to call me at 630-232-5931 or go to uh, yeah, the email is... Um, C. Lawson, so C like Chris, L A U Z E N, uh, at Kane Co. Board, so K A N E C O B O A R D uh, dot org. Okay. And we can tell you who's serving them. We can tell that person who's serving them. And then building closer connections, very important. Uh, uh, how we'll use our collaboration is to hold the line on the size of government. Uh, I think that that's the whole idea behind the U.S. Constitution, is that people had uh, had, had had to fight a revolution uh, to overthrow uh, what they considered ty uh, tyranny, and so just limit the size of government. We have to live within our means without asking people for more. Um, uh, uh, there are going to be some. Uh, the next on next up is there's a workforce investment board, uh, where there's 40 board members, where they uh, assign or allocate six million dollars that comes to uh, Kane, Kendall, and uh, DeKalb County. Uh, they they assign that. We've gone through some modifications of the structure there. Uh, we have some new members. Uh, that is to 
uh, foster more jobs paying higher wages. So that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to. Okay. And I'm looking forward to getting to know you better. And, and I think that what you do here is outstanding. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, you're not doing too shabby yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes us partners. All right. Uh, once again, Kane County Board Chairman Chris Lawson joining us in the studio today. Thank you so much. Well, what a pleasure. And, Thank you. And I don't want you to be a stranger. Okay. That's, that's absolutely. That's a deal. All right. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching and listening again today. Um, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, Fox Valley Voice. You can also find our previous shows at my website, foxvalleyvoice.com. I would like to thank our uh, sponsor for our video services. That is Drendel and Jansen's Law Group in Batavia. And I'd like to invite you to come back this Thursday at 10 a.m., we are going to have Melissa Headland, who is the director of a uh, art therapy project in Aurora called The Light of the Heart. Oh, that's wonderful. So we are going to speak with her this Thursday. Until then, be nice. That's right. Right? <laughs>